What's good, y'all? It's your girl, Clarissa Lachey, a.k.a. Poison for the Soul, baby. Okay, so what's good, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about 25 life lessons that I learned throughout my life. Things that are really important to me. Of course, the importance are not in any particular order, but I am going to go based off, go on a list that I already created. So, before I get started, go ahead Hit that subscribe button, subscribe to my channel, um, support, you know, go ahead, comment below what you like about this video, what you like about, what would you like to see, go ahead and just start liking, you know, start showing some support because girl, I'm gonna be out here pushing some content out for y'all, okay. So yeah, 25 life lessons that I learned in 25 years of my life. I am now 26 years old, okay? It's a blessing to still be alive. And it's a blessing to still be able to shed my beautiful light onto this dark world, okay? That we live in. Hallelujah. Okay. Ooh, child. Every time I get ready to do a video, the fan want to come on, the air conditioning want to come on, but we're going to ignore it, okay? One lesson that I learned that I really just want to shed light on is trusting the universe. Sometimes things are just out of your hands. Sometimes things have to happen for you to grow and to evolve and for you to be able to shed your own layers and just be a better person, be a stronger person, to be kinder, to just, you know, develop the soft skills that you need to be able to connect with other people. Like, let's say it like that. Trust the universe to guide you, trust the universe to lead you, trust the universe to support you. Sometimes when you ain't got nobody else to turn to, when you ain't got no backbone, when you ain't got nobody to uplift you, you gotta uplift yourself. But sometimes you can just take the weight of the world off your shoulders and give it to God, give it to the universe, give it to the energy supporting you, okay? The things that you can and cannot see. You know what? I'm gonna get some extra light going on. Ooh, y'all can see. Y'all can see. Y'all can see me better, right? Okay. So number two i'm gonna go ahead and say trust your intuition okay you want to give it to the universe the things you cannot handle but as you're going through life and as you're guiding or allowing yourself to be guided throughout this world you do need to trust your intuition trust your aura, you trust your higher self you know be able to use your logical reasoning think about what's going to put you in the best position sometimes it's going to go against the grain. Sometimes it's going to go against what you actually want and desire. Um, that's your ego. Okay, that is your ego speaking to you. So you want to learn how to ignore your ego and pay attention to your higher self, your aura. Um, definitely a life lesson that I will continue to shed light on because the more I learn to trust my aura, my intuition, the more I'm being led to a higher place in life. And so I'm very grateful for that. Number three, be true to yourself. That means accept all of you. Be true to yourself. Know what values that you have. Know what standards that you have in life. Know what you want out of life. And follow that. Don't get swayed it off your path. Just because people that you may be around, friends that may be in your corner, in your ear, trying to tell you to be left and try to tell you to go left when you need to go right, tell you to do this when you need to be doing that. Be true to yourself. Do what it is that you desire. Don't let anyone come here and try to tell you how to live the life that you know that you want. Cultivate it for yourself. Be true to yourself. Okay? Number four is accept yourself and all of your flaws. Accept yourself meaning you are who you are and learn how to love those parts even the parts that you do not like on rip the parts that you want to hide behind hide from the road and just don't ever let that part come out you gotta learn how to accept that because that's a part of who you are there's a light side of you and there's a dark side of you that's why you have to go and explore your shadow self go and do the shadow work and understand who is that dark soul who is that dark light who is the dark being that is within you because there are some times where you're going to be facing certain situations or circumstances where that dark self, where that shadow self is going to come out. Ooh, and it's going to scare you. It's going to scare the people around you. They're not ready for that. They're not used to that side because they're so used to the light version of you or they used to the self version that you show and display. But when that shadow self comes out, 
you know not everybody gonna like it not everybody gonna like it and it's okay so you gotta learn how to accept it first because you gotta know that not everyone's gonna like it so you gotta like it first and also that includes your flaws i mean y'all be seeing the hyperpigmentation going on over here okay you gotta <laughs> i just get on camera and i just show face i don't put on makeup on because i don't want to break out no more i'm gonna be honest but yeah also like yeah the stretch marks you know I, i've been having stretch marks all my entire life around my neck i remember like my cousin in the ninth grade he pointed it out and i was like <laughs> okay you ain't have to just say it like that but you gotta accept your flaws you gotta accept yourself you gotta be true to yourself all the above okay Number five, accept people for who they are. You cannot change nobody. First of all, you need to be worried about changing yourself if that's what you want to do. But when it comes to changing anyone else, it's not it. It's, that's not even your role. That's not even the title. It's not even the gift that God gave you. No, 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 no. Accept people for who they are because who they are is who they are. And who they're not is who they will never be. And you got to be able to accept that because in order for you to discern if you want that person to continue to stay in your life, you have to be able to discern if you're willing to accept them for who they are, the person that they're showing you. And if it comes to a time where it's like, I don't like this, I don't like this, and I don't know, and I don't even want to deal with this, that is okay. But with that being said, it's not your place, it's not your job then to go and shame that person, to go and judge that person, to go and belittle that person, to go and put them down. No. Just remove yourself from the equation or remove that person from your life and keep it pushing. Accept people for who they are. Okay. Be present. Number six is be present. This is something that I always struggle with because living in a role where it's like it can be a little taxing on the body, taxing mentally, and you just like you want to escape. I used to struggle with maladaptive daydream so bad, like, got to a point where it was like, that's just the only reality I wanted to live in because going to work, I deleted the video, by the way, of why I quit my job, but I am going to be doing an, a part two of that video, I'm just going to be nicer because, you know, some people may have gotten in their feelings even though, like, the truth hurts. I had to learn to be present. Even in situations where I may not be comfortable in. Even in situations where I'm ready to snap in. I have to find something to look at, to bring me joy, to bring me laughter, to distract myself. Because in order for me to be present, I have to enjoy the reality. I have to enjoy the situation, the scenario. I have to enjoy it. Because if not, I'm ready to escape. And so I have to trick my brain to saying, like, I'm enjoying this day. I'm enjoying this moment. I'm enjoying the rain, even though I really want it to be sunny outside i'm enjoying the ugliness even though i want it to be beautiful i'm enjoying the flaws even though i want it to be perfect i have to trick my brain to saying like i enjoy this moment so that way i can be more present be present so that way you can stay connected to yourself and to the source energy that surrounds you and also to the people that are in your life be connected be present okay up next remember the good times the memories like when you spend so much time and so many days in your head like i did like always like daydreaming and escaping it got to a point where i was doing it so often that i didn't even remember when i was having a good time or if the good like if i, I could share a laugh with someone and like once that moment passed i don't remember like the laugh that i shared with them i don't remember the happiness i just remember that yo i'm still stuck in this <laughs> this mindset where i hate everything i don't want to be here and it's just like you shouldn't be like that it shouldn't be like that so anytime you find yourself stuck in bed or just in your head think about good memories think about the people that make you laugh think about the person that you love think about the person that you know loves you and they do anything for you and you do anything for them like even if y'all are not together even if y'all are separated even if y'all going through y'all's own phases you know or just your family the people that you are actually connected with in your family like my mother okay like my best friend like i like to think of those people in the childhood memories that i had or even just even if they weren't childhood maybe we were adults memories that we had and shared together i like to think about those memories because it brings a smile on my face it makes me feel good about life it makes me feel good that i'm just being able to enjoy this moment this day by thinking about the good memories and hey it can bring up a new conversation and y'all have a new good memory because now you're laughing about that other memory and it just it keeps going so i always remember the good memories also in in along with that let's say 
Number eight is allow the bad thoughts to flow. We're not going to act like bad things don't happen. We're not going to act like we don't ever think about bad thoughts or have intrusive thoughts. Allow those bad thoughts to flow, but let them flow out of your system. Don't let them stay in here. When you have a bad thought, allow it to matriculate. Allow it to formulate. Ooh, excuse me, I'll just be burping. And then allow it to flow out of your brain so that way you can continue to reminisce and think about the good things, the good memories. You don't want to be stuck in a rut. You don't want to be stuck thinking like, oh my God, my life is so bad. Even if your life is bad. like <laughs> You gotta like learn how to just trick the brain to think that like it's not always that bad. It's really not. Um, you could be facing poverty, you could be facing homelessness, you could be facing a lot of abuse in your life, a lot of neglect, um, a lot of trauma, and if you can just allow those moments to pass through and just remember that, hey, you know, just like it's, there's cloudy days, there's also sunny days. So don't stay there, don't allow yourself to be stuck in the bad thoughts, flow away. Number nine is acknowledge your traumas and abuse. It is okay you are human to sit and say, you know what, that's a messed up situation. You know, like that person did me really bad. You know, I didn't have to accept that. I didn't have to tolerate that. I didn't have to deal with that, you know, and I'm hurting, you know, or that moment really messed me up in my head or I'm really sad. Like, you know, you can say that you can use your emotions and you can sit here and acknowledge that bad things did happen to you and those it didn't make you feel good about it and it made you feel bad for a really long time and it wasn't and even though it wasn't your fault you still felt bad because you couldn't do anything about it allow yourself to you know go through that process so that way you can heal from your trauma and heal from your pain the only reason why i would recommend that is because when you allow yourself to suppress those thoughts for so long and just not allow the trauma to really you know I guess filter out it becomes a part of you and it begins to weigh you down when you don't allow your bad thoughts and the bad memories to flow out they continue to stay with you no matter what your day looks like the next day or your year looks like if you don't ever process the, your trauma your trauma is going to continue to stay with you it's going to age with you and sometimes it's going to age badly and it's going to cause you to age badly so release it relive through it and heal um acknowledge it and number 10, when I say heal your wounds, be kind and gentle to yourself. Sometimes we can be so mean to ourselves. Sometimes we can be so hard on ourselves. Sometimes we can be so harsh to ourselves because we feel like we deserve this and that and we should be there. And the reality is you have to go through every stage. You have to. Even if some, some stages skip around, you have to double back and go through that stage. And literally, that is what I've been doing. I've been doubling back and going through stages that I allowed myself to skip through. Because I didn't want to fully process my trauma. I'm going to tell you a little story. I don't want to get too deep. But in 2020, even though I learned a lot about myself, I learned new skills. I learned how to do my eyelashes. I learned how to crochet. I learned how to do a lot of stuff in 2020. I learned how to dance. Okay. Well, I learned how to follow a routine, child. Because before that, I could not follow a routine to save my life. Um... I also went through a very bad traumatic experience for myself and it's something that I experienced a lot but this time it was so bad because it allowed me to really shut down. I became addicted to a drug that I once shamed. I once shamed this drug and I actually shamed people for doing this drug and it was weed. <laughs> it was weed. Like I was like, I don't understand how people could just wake up and smoke weed all day. And then after I went through a very traumatic event where I was friends with someone for a very short time. See, I used that, that term loosely and I realized like friends our labels that we put on people who are really strangers to us and i was in a period where it's like i wanted to meet someone new and this person the conversation was so good i thought well, this is going to be a great friend in my head i was feeling very friendly i was on a friendship level but in their head they was on to take it to the next level and i wasn't with them on that if you get my just my gist okay because i know people be very in their feelings when you start talking about trauma and you know next you know you talk about your trauma but you triggering them and now you gotta apologize to them for triggering them when really it's like this is about me <laughs> so after i went through that um i got addicted to weed like it was the only thing that was getting me through my day and honestly it was helping me um escape more it was really helping me escape like i would get up i was working from home at this point child and i would smoke 
I'll wake up in the morning and go to the gym, <laughs> smoke, and just be out. I'll be knocked out because weed, I'm not the super productive person when I smoke weed. I no longer smoke weed anymore because it's just not serving my higher self in life. But I would like smoke and get high and just be out. And when I would wake up, I'll probably eat. And I was, like, I was at a point where I couldn't even eat. So I'll smoke again and be out. I'm talking about that was a year was that the year that Mo3 died oh my god that was the year that Mo3 died like oh my god like I was really going through it because Mo3 like I had fell in love with his music somebody actually put me on to one song from him and like I just kept downloading more music because even though like it was like a gangster rap it was like he was sitting here talking about his trauma or his pain or singing like his life through his music through like some stuff that I ain't never really experienced everything he talked about I really did experience in a different level right and so when he died, I actually, I couldn't even listen to his music no more because it was too real that he was gone. And I was like, I was supposed to go to your concert. Anyways, neither here nor there. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> Heal your room. Okay. Instead of me acknowledging that, hey, I went through something really bad, I became hard on myself. Like, oh, I became pothead or I became like really down on myself and I just couldn't find my find a way to lift myself out of it. So instead I continued to consume this drug that I just like at one point I had such disdain for. Like I was just like, I do not smoke weed. I don't understand how people just smoke weed all day, all day, all day, all day. And then I started smoking weed all day, all day just to process my trauma. Be kind to yourself, be gentle to yourself, heal your wounds. And if that's through therapy or if that's just through finding a creative outlet, uh, outlet or finding someone to distract you and hang out with or going to a place where you can just sit and be do that do that heal your wounds be kind to yourself do your makeup if you were a guy um I don't know, play video games or shoot, get yourself ready. Like, put on your favorites, your favorite cologne, perfume, whatever you want to, and just look good and just be good and be kind to yourself. Be gentle, okay? We need to be kind to ourselves more often. Number 11, reprogram yourself and mind, literally. Everything that you just felt like was not, sh should not be a part of your higher self or as you evolve, you have to sit back and look at it. I used to be the type of person where I was sleeping until about 11 o'clock. If I ain't had to go to work, I was sleeping until 11 o'clock. I don't care if I went to bed at 10 o'clock the night before. Okay, I'm sleeping until 11 a.m. because I feel like I just need all this rest. I don't. That's too much. But again, it's part of me wanting to escape and just get through my day the quickest. And one day I woke up and I was like, I want to live. Like, I want to, I started saying the phrase, I want to press start on my day. I don't want to hit play. I don't want to continue the same cycle that I want to. I want to wake up and press start. I want to basically put in a whole new movie and live my life like I'm on a big movie screen. And when I started doing that, I started walking different. I started acting different. I mean, baby, the way I was flipping my hair, putting on my lip gloss and just sitting it. I mean, people, you can tell me nothing. And I'm going to tell you that it was bothering a lot of people. It was shaking the tables for a lot of people. Because when people see you in a bad place, when people meet you on a bad day, and they continue to see you in that way, when you start to change and reprogram yourself, they start seeing someone different, and it scares them. And so how people respond to that also has an effect on you because it's like you want people to be receptive of it you want people to accept the new you the evolved you the better you the reformed you and appreciate that and also want to be friends with that version and sometimes people can't handle that version of you because they're like what so, like it's shaking my mind but really you gotta learn how to reprogram yourself so what i started doing instead of waking up at 11 o'clock a.m i made sure that i told myself i'm gonna get up even though when the alarm came up at 6 30 child and when i want to get up i was like okay at least let me just lay here but with my eyes <laughs> it, it worked okay let me just open my eyes and like i'm gonna just sit here because like oh we don't want to get out of bed but i need to sit here and open up my eyes and then get my day started and that's just that's just starting off with one thing working out became more so i'm not worried about losing weight but i want to feel good and how else can i feel good outside of working out eating differently or just finding a new hobby like i said like finding someone to talk to someone that makes you feel good just learning how to reprogram your mind even reading a new book finding a new youtube channel to watch okay poison for the soul is your girl 
reprogram yourself reprogram your mind choose better habits and life choices that includes friends that include includes the social interaction that you have i don't like going to the clubs and i realized that the last time i was at the club and i went to the club for my birthday and i actually knew of like I actually do not like being in a club. At first, I thought it was a Houston thing. I'm going to stop talking crap about Houston because I've realized I've really been bothering a lot of people when I talk bad about Houston. <laughs> but what it is, is I like being in social gatherings where I can connect with people. Being in a club where everyone is kind of segregated or separated in, in their own little sections and it's just like music playing and you don't understand the music and it's just like, I don't want to do this. I can start choosing better habits for myself. So instead of me going to clubs and lounges, I found social clubs to go to. Or I found like music, um, live music that I really enjoyed. Or even going to comedy and poetry slams. I really love that. Um, choosing like, oh, going to Dave & Buster's main event. Like I, I love being a big kid, okay? Like I girl went to Walmart one day and I just rode around in a big car. In a little uh, shopping cart, the ones that you that are uh, auto electronic. Child, I had the time of my life. It was fun. It was real, real fun. Um, eat, even when you're not hungry. That was something that I always struggle with. Not really. I, okay, I kind of have, it's like a double-edged sword to me when I'm stressed or depressed. I either eat a lot or I don't eat at all. And so what I started to do was when I was going through that phase where I wasn't eating much, I mean, even a, a protein bar would taste so nasty to me. And I used to love eating protein bars or just eating like a sandwich or I don't know, something that I actually a comfort food that like, even that wasn't motivation for me. I will eat half of it and force myself to get it down. Because you have to fuel the body. You ain't got to eat bad. You ain't got to, you know, destroy your body. But eat when you're not hungry. Because, and this is when you haven't been eating for a long time. I'm not saying, like, binge eat like how I used to. But, like, eat even when you're not hungry because you're doing your body a service. You know, you're doing your body justice by doing so, okay? Number 14. Take care of yourself first, okay? There is a lot of leeches in this world. There's a lot of people that want a piece of you, that want a part of you. They don't deserve all of you, hunty. You may make the decision to give them some of you, and that's fine. That's okay. That's your business. But make sure that you take care of yourself first. Make sure that you make sure that you good first before you start outsourcing yourself to anybody. Make sure that you make sure that you was good first because these people, they will take, 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 take and not replenish. They will not give. And you got to be able to discern who you want to give your power to, who you want to give your service to. And the first person that it should be is yourself. Be selfish with your time, with your energy, with your love, and your money. Because not everybody who comes around, not everyone who you put that title of friend on, is really a friend in return. And that is something that I have to learn the hard way, unfortunately. But you know, I'm learning, I'm getting there. All right. Be patient and accepting of your family. All the parts of them, even the ones they don't. Like, oh child, this is a hard one because like primary and extended, but let's start with the primary family first. The people that you like your 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 blessed siblings, your mother, your father, and I'm gonna count my grandma on this. That's part of my primary family. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm the only girl and I've always had to be the one that was forgiven. Okay. I dealt with a lot of Big personalities, a lot of people who just felt like because my voice is very soft and feminine, it couldn't get as deep and loud as theirs that they could overrun me. And I had to learn that even though I do not like this person today, I still love them tomorrow. And so, ooh. when you learn how to accept your family for who they are, like, you know, you can grow up in the same household and go through the exact same trauma. A very similar trauma but process it very differently and learning how to have grace with the people that you share blood with and share a different type of bond that you would never be able to share with other people outside of that that is so hard because there are people who cut their family off and never speak to them again and child even though i try to 
it's like I'm forced to still interact with these people even when I don't want to even when they have shown me that there's no reason for us to ever step, step foot in the same room again I still have to look at this person and shake hands with them and break blood like Jesus Oh, break bread like Jesus did and give them a hug and invite them into spaces that I really don't want them in but you know what because I still love you tomorrow I'm gonna show you love today even though I don't like you the love for you is different and so I have to accept you and even the flaws even the flaws start with your primary family first because the extended one you know the extended one they can get a little bit more love from that far but you know you still gotta it starts within and the family trees that we have, especially of our living um, bloodline, we got to really heal those wounds. We got to really heal those traumas because it's, that is how the generational curses begin to break. You cannot go around harboring feelings of resentment or you did me wrong, so I'm going to hold this against you. Because when you do, it's only tearing you apart. And that gets passed down to your bloodline. It continues to get passed down to your offspring. So while you can and when you can make sure that you still remind the people in your family in your blood that the love is still there even the ones that may not deserve it the love is still there um be patient and accept it is what i'm just trying to get at socialize 16 socialize i mean i already kind of talked about this i already touched on this especially when it comes to like finding new hobbies and healthy habits socialize i mean i'm such a big popular loner like i can go to a whole club and sit by myself and interact with thyself and not even have a whole conversation with other people child i was recently working at a job and it was just like i don't even want to sit at the table with y'all <laughs> not because i don't like y'all but it's because i don't want to force a conversation i don't like surface level conversation because I'm such a deep person but I realize sometimes people can only go as deep as they allow themselves to go so learning how to socialize and meet people where they at has become a big part of my journey and honestly it's become interesting like I've been able to meet all different types of interesting people in the process I'm still learning how to categorize these people that I meet as in just strangers that I just met today and instead of giving them the title oh that's a friend when really they're not a friend they're just a friend complete stranger that you just had a good conversation with and yeah socializing is good again number 17 find hobbies creative avenues child i love to pole dance i love to paint i love to do anything that is creative like play instruments um i recently recently got into the idea of learning how to play guitar and i really wanted to teach myself but i don't have a guitar so i'm thinking about going to a place where I can just learn at the place. I ain't gotta buy the guitar, but like, you know, whenever I wanna go in there and learn and like learn how to play the guitar, like there's like an instructor and I just play the guitar there because, you know, it's just an instrument that I wanna learn. And then from there, I just keep going. Like I wanna play the violin. Like I really love music. I love art. I love anything that's creative. So I always recommend that you find creative avenues, okay? It just uplifts the soul. At least these are life lessons that I figured out for myself. You know, everybody's life lessons will be different for them, but these are 25 life lessons for me that I learned. Um, number 18 is connect with your soul tribe and your family. These are actually your extended family or your friends that you can categorize as soul mates. <laughs> soul tribes, okay. We're gonna find a way to connect with your soul tribes and that could be through church gatherings um community gatherings where it's you're around spiritually like people i'm talking about like your vibration is matched meaning when you go around these people there is an even exchange of energy where it's not just oh you're giving in this or you're sacrificing in this or you're having to deplete your energy in this no you guys are both coming and merging and it's like on a soulful level find your soul tribe um that's gonna look different for everybody like that's why i mentioned church gatherings and community gatherings um it can you can meet someone at the at a spiritual retreat and boom they become part of your soul tribe because y'all hit it off so well um connect with your community i love being able to give back uh, whether that is working with youth, whether that is working with the elderly, whether that's working with the homeless, um, whether that is just, you know, going to a park and just, 
Ooh, passing out lunches. Do they still do that nowadays? I remember back in the day where like the uh, Boys and Girls Club committee, they, they used to like come to the parks and pass out lunches. Do they do that? They should do that again. Like, you know, just pass out lunches to the kids. I love kids. I love the kids. So connect with your community. That could be even at your apartment complex, okay? Like if there's a barbecue or uh, you have no barbecue and then you know you could get a lot of food and you know that there's kids coming around and you know people, they probably just got to work and they ain't ate all day and they smell your good old barbecue. Why don't you just invite them over? I mean, not everybody's invited to the barbecue though. Like I just want y'all to be on the same page. Not everybody is invited to the barbecue. Stop inviting these outsiders to the barbecue. I'm just saying. Um... Connect, oh, number 20 is walking your path. What does that mean? Because everyone be like, I don't even know what I want to do in my life. I don't even know what career I want to work in. That's not what I'm talking about, okay? Walking your path, meaning the natural gifts that you were born with, whether that is you're a good listener. You are very good at being nurturing. You're very good with your hands. Any way that you can give to others where it's not feeling like you're depleting yourself, but it's a natural gift that you have. Where it's like you have so much of this gift that it's just like it's overrunning. Walk in that path. I feel like for me, my path is healing people. And that's through stories. Which is why, again, I created my YouTube channel so I can start telling my stories because I like to heal. I like, it's not even that I like to do this, okay? Because I used to work at a psych hospital, y'all. I want to do another story time. <laughs> I want to do another story time on that. But like, why I really quit that job? Because I'm going to have to be a little nicer in this video. <laughs> but walking your path, meaning finding the gift that you was blessed with, that you was born with, and use that to your advantage and utilize that. And when I say use it to your advantage, don't use it for harm, but use it for good. And that is up to you to decide, to, de to decipher what is good and what is bad. You know, I ain't nobody's judge and actually ain't nobody, can't nobody judge you but yourself and your Ori and God, okay? Like, let's be real. Um, connect with spirituality. We are all soul people. We're all soul beings. We're spiritual beings. And we have this innate inclination to connect with spirituality because we were sent here to not only learn how to live life as humans, but also be able to merge the human experience with the spiritual experience. Spirituality looks different for everybody. Again, not necessarily going to church, but this is something that you can do with yourself or by yourself, meaning you can meditate. You can um, burn sage. That's what the people do on the TikToks and the movies. Or you can walk in nature and you can sit and be. And sometimes you can talk to your ancestors. Sometimes you can um, light candles or burn, you know, burn herbs. Sometimes smoke herbs. I've been trying not to smoke so much herbs these days. <laughs> But I'm talking about actual like herbs like mugwort, um, that blue lotus. I mean, you got other herbs that you can play with. And sometimes you can even bathe with these herbs. But it's more so allowing downloads to happen. Um, which is you're not necessarily thinking with your conscious brain. You're allowing things to get into your subconscious. Connecting with spirituality is going to look very different for everyone. And that could be actually trying um, psychedelics. I don't recommend that. The reason why is because we are natural spiritual beings. Psychedelics can put you into a whole nother realm that you don't want to be in. Okay. Um, even ask your old, like ask the elderly community or ask your um, elders in your family and your blood and your lineage. How can you connect with spirituality or how can you connect with the ancestors and spiritual beings within your family? So that way you can have guidance, okay? I wouldn't recommend that you always go to TikTok or go to YouTube or find those things because people can intentionally be misleading. I mean, think about it. Nowadays, spirituality has become one of the biggest topics that people talk about. The biggest thing that's being promoted and there's always a second or a hidden agenda when things are so popularized, so trendy these days. Try lightly. Don't just let nobody read you. Don't let nobody feel so comfortable where they can come and invite themselves into your energy because they feeling like, oh, well, I, I didn't got all this knowledge. Baby, we all got the knowledge. We got, we all have access to the exact same knowledge, the exact same wisdom. 
we have to learn how to tap into that. Okay, we're gonna learn how to tap into it. Tap into it. Um, number 22 is kind of like the same thing as connect with your family, connect with soul tribe, but find a spiritual community or religious group in your area that you trust to help lead you on your journey. And I just wanted to throw that in there because it like followed right behind with connecting with spirituality. Um, 23, follow your dreams. Okay, like there are so many dreams that we probably have in our lifetime where it's like at one point when I was a little girl, I wanted to be a judge. And then at one point I wanted to be an actress. And at one point I wanted to be um, a millionaire. I still want to be a millionaire. <laughs> I wanted to be like a doctor, a psychiatrist. I wanted to be um, a lawyer. And honestly, my dream now is to literally be free and i'm talking about being free mentally not like having all of these convictions around me feeling like people are controlling me to follow their agenda like no i want to be free free me free me okay free me that's what i want okay number 24 is love properly learning how to love properly learning how to allow yourself to love and receive love is so big because sometimes depending on the type of family that we grew up in, we don't actually learn how to love properly because we see it displayed in so many different ways. I've already touched on the angry black woman and like sometimes love looks different from a black woman who has so much on her shoulders because that love looks like anger sometimes. That love looks chaotic sometimes. And that love looks scary sometimes because depending on the person who is receiving it or perceiving it, it's going to be interpreted from that perspective versus like someone could tell you I love you but then because you are at the same time it's just like is this really what love is because this love is just it's kind of scary like I don't really know if I want this love this way um learning how to love properly love is kind love is gentle love is soft love is patient child love is nurturing love is so creative love is fun like you can redefine love for yourself and once you feel that love for yourself, you're able to cultivate it and give and that love to other people. So allow yourself to love and receive love, okay? And give love freely. Number 25. Oh, we have to put this at the bottom of the list because Charlie let me tell you something. You have to learn how to accept betrayal and always stay loyal. Accepting betrayal, oh, we... It hits so deeply because sometimes, most of the times, you never see it coming. You may expect it from certain people because, you know, I see that character flaw in you. But when it comes like a blind side, like it comes from out of nowhere, it's like it's from someone that you just knew that just based off of who you are and the connection that you and that person have, that they was going to ride with you to the end, that they was going to be loyal to you to the end. And that person, when that betrays, person betrays you, it's like walking on needles. And I'm talking about the needles that are pointing up and you're just like having to walk. And then it's just like you can't even step off of that needle because like it's going to stay with you. And then you step it on some more beds and needles and more beds and needles and more beds and needles. It's just like, and then you end up falling. So now you got the needles all up in your knees and then you try to pick yourself up and now the needles are all in your hand. Like it's not even just a stab in the back. Like because the stab in the back at least is quick. A stab in the back at least you only get in one jab. Or unless that person is psychopathic, they just keep jabbing you. But when you get betrayed by the person that you just knew was going to be with you to the end, it hurts. It hits different. Because you knew that you never was going to betray that person. And sometimes you got to realize betrayal is a part of that process. It's a part of the stages of life. Betrayal is something that is going to happen. And it has to happen in order for you to ascend, in order for you to grow and how you respond to that betrayal is going to determine your outlook it's going to determine your fate because it's not what the person did to you it's how you respond it's always going to be how you respond to it so learning how to accept betrayal and allowing it to happen even though it ain't really in your hands sometimes the betrayal is going to happen anyway like betrayal has already been planned thought out and it started in the formation before it even hits you you already been ran over by that train before you even realize that the person that betrayed you was the person that you would have gave your life for. All right, y'all. That is 25 life lessons that I have learned in 25 years of living. I'm now 26 years old, but I had to get, put this video out because now that I have closed the last and final chapter, which was accepting betrayal, I didn't even know it at the time. 
I have opened a new book and I have started writing on those pages. And you know, it's kind of like a prequel. And even though chapter or number 25 on my list was the last chapter of the, my first book, um, now I'm having to heal from betrayal. And so that's chapter one, two, and three of my new book. And um, I wasn't just betrayed by one person. And I wasn't just betrayed by two people. I was betrayed by people that was really close to me, people that I loved and people that I expected to or just assumed loved me in the same regards. And having to pick myself back up, it's it's looking a little different because my walk is a little different. You know, I got a little bit of a, a lean in my walk, you know, because it's like I survived it, but I'm still surviving it. And I'm also still living it because... It was so blindsided. You know, I need to stop speaking vaccines. <laughs> but it just hit me like a train truck. And it's just like, I don't even know how I'm still even walking at this point. I don't even know how I'm still living. But clearly, my purpose is not finished. You know, I still got a lot of life in me. And I still got a lot of work to do. And of course, it starts with healing myself. And healing the people that I'm blessed to do life with even if that's even though like some days or just a part of me wish that I could just walk past these people like I never knew them like erase every memory that I had from them from my brain from my being from my body and just from my entire existence because it's like a part of me it's like you never deserve me you never deserve a friendship like me okay but I'm gonna end the video like that because I know it got a little deep Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. I don't even know who be watching these videos. Shout I know my mom will be watching them. I know she be sharing them. So shout out to my mama. Shout out to my friend. And you know, I don't know who else be like watching these videos. But um, continue to watch. Continue to learn. Continue to grow. Continue to support. Of course, it's your girl Crystal Lachey. A.K.A. Poison for the Soul. Yeah. Comment, subscribe, like the video. Did I already say that? I probably already did. But yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for watching.